Welcome ladies and gentlemen, this is your one-stop shop for barb chaining. Thank you very much for clicking on the video and let's get right into it. What is barb chaining? In Rise of Kingdoms we have area of effect skills, which means whatever skill is an AOE is not just applying to the target you are facing, but rather a target location. Now if you are fighting against a barbarian and a AOE skill is going off and there is another barbarian within the range of this AOE um, skill, they are being added to the fight without actually spending the AP that otherwise would be necessary for them for you to fight against them. That is basically all that Bob Jenning really is. Now the idea is you can go from barbarian to barbarian to barbarian using those AOE skills and theoretically, hypothetically make a or create an infinite amount of um, barbarian kills within uh, just spending the AP for the initial attack of one barbarian. Now, who should Bob chain? Should you do it? In general, yes, because it is free value and as most people constantly complain about the monetization in the game, it should be on each and every one of us to actually go for the free value. The, the mechanics are there, so let's abuse them. I would say there are a couple of different um, categories of players. Maybe there might be somebody who is really just looking for a social aspect. There, there are people who are really competitive. They want to fight in KVK and do nothing else. And then there are players who just want to have a really big account. And for all three of them, this applies. You should bob chain. For the social aspect, you bob chain, you have an excess of resources and now you can help other people with resources. For competitive players, well, you need to do everything you can to get an edge over other players. And the way you do that is by gaining more of everything, right? So you have to bob chain. That is basically how you do it. You, you need that edge over other people. And then uh, also for people who just want to have a big account, well, you will basically never run out of speed ups and resources if you constantly put time effort into bob chaining. Now, what do you need for bob chaining? What you generally only need or the only requirement is a commander with an AOE damage skill. So, Ethelflaed perfectly viable. Uh, pretty much everybody has her and you can just start with her. The only thing is you always want the AOE commander as a secondary. Um, I'm gonna explain that in a minute. Uh, perfect case scenario you have Ye Song Ye. But uh, don't go to expertise him just for the bob chaining. That's, uh, there was a point in the game where this was okay but nowadays it's a little bit... Uh, uh, out of fashion, I, w I should say. Um, that is all you really generally need. As far as your primary commander goes, well, it depends on what you have and what you are doing. So, for example, if you are in your home kingdom and you are not a really strong player, you can just use your Lohar. Perfectly fine. As I showed in the beginning, you can even do the barbarians in the KVK with a Lohar. But then, as I'm going to explain later, you can also use somebody like Tao Tao. Um, the gen the, like in general, the primary commander having a healing skill is always good, just for you know the longevity of that march because you want to have it out as long as possible or for as long as you have time to warp chain. As far as how does it actually work? Well, you just engage a barbarian. You gotta make sure you have another barbarian in the close vicinity and as your AOE skill goes off you want this skill to hit the 
next barbarian, so the second barbarian that is within close vicinity. Originally I said the AOE commander should be your secondary and here is the reason why. When you are trying to drag your barbarian to the next one, you don't really know at which point is the AOE skill actually coming, right? Well, actually you can know by making the AOE commander your secondary. So the primary is going to fire his skill or her skill and a second later um, the secondary commander is firing the AOE skill so you know um, how to time it. The reason why you want to do all of this is because sometimes you walk towards the barbarian you want to add and the, the one you are fighting against has to follow you. If they are walking out of range, out of their maximum range, they can like uh, you can track them, they will return to the original spawning point, right? However, sometimes there is this millisecond they get in range just just close enough for the secondary commander to fire off the um, AOE skill. So the one, the barbarian, the one you are fighting against is actually still returning to the um, spawning point, but the other one you wanted to add is still being added. So it keeps your Jane alive. That is the reason why you want uh, your AOE skill commander as a secondary. Speaking of um, spawning points, the range you can track a barbarian is not, not depending on at which point did you add them. So that's the, by point I mean physical location. It is actually based on the point where they spawned. So sometimes you will look at a location on the map and suddenly a barbarian is appearing. So that's the spawn point. And around this point you have a circle and that is the the the, um, the maximum range where you can track them. So basically you will never really know how far can I track this barbarian because you never know at um, in which position of this circle are they actually. Um, and I also want to point out uh, this is all very um, theoretical so there are no visual indicators of this circle or movement range of a barbarian. So a whole lot of what you do on bob chaining is based on luck. Although with all the things that I'm telling you um, you can kind of you know keep keep the keep the luck uh, in uh, in a chokehold. I wanna s <laughs> I wanna say. Now here are a couple of tidbits for you. The free value starts at doing two barbarians at once. You don't always have like you don't have to look at this and be like, okay, I don't have eight hours a day for bob chains. You can, for example, send out your five marches, kill barbarians and with the rest of the AP that you have left over and now you would have to spend AP to kill another barbarian, you can just send back your peacekeepers, send out four gatherers, send out one uh, strong march and do a bob chain or do two or three bob chains. And if you repeat that every single time uh, when you have full AP, now, you know, that all that extra stuff you get for free uh, stacks up over time. So don't look at this and be like, oh yeah, th this is for people who have eight hours a day bob chaining. That, that's not true. It doesn't always have to be like that. Then the next thing is most people will tell you to, to use a slow march. And this is wrong. This is absolutely incorrect. Um, you want a, a fast march. My Richard usually has full legendary equipment. However, at some point I even started to use um, two windswept items. So this is the very fast um, blue set 
that you can craft. And I usually have two items on him from that set and also the Call of the Loyal, which is a blue accessory that gives 5% uh, march speed. I also have the triple line formation. I want to make sure Richard is fast, although um, in the clips I'm playing, I don't have uh, those items on him. It's just legendary equipment. But anyway, the reason is this. People say use a slow march because as you are walking away from a barbarian to drag them to a position, if this barbarian loses physical contact to you for five seconds, they will just disengage and walk back to the original spawning point. However, this will never happen. If you bob chain uh, regularly, you will just know how far can I walk before um, they before I'm losing contact to them for too long. So this will actually at some point never happen. Maybe um, like I'm never playing on a phone may or mobile device maybe um, it is a little more difficult on a mobile device but then i also know other people are just much better than i am playing on a phone so i would assume this is actually correct for everybody but at the very least if you are playing on a tablet or a pc um, this should actually never happen if you did bob chain for a couple of hours however having a faster march is always better the reason is this you are going to walk across the map a whole lot sometimes for 10 minutes sometimes 20 minutes going from spot a to b sometimes you have cleared out a com a a um a like a complete outskirt line of the map and now you want to go to the bottom side and now you have to walk for 10 minutes not only that but most importantly, if you have a really fast march, you can um, wrap around a barbarian without them really moving. So um, just to visualize this, let's say you fight a barbarian. You are facing them, they are facing you. But behind the barbarian is another barbarian, maybe five feet away. Now, if you have a really slow march, what, ha what might happen is you try to run to the other barbarian and you basically push the original barbarian in front of you. So they are moving all the time, probably potentially moving further and further away from the original barbarian uh, spawning point and especially moving much further than they actually would have to for you to reach the next barbarian. If you have a really fast march, you can uh, coordinate your um, march to walk in a way where the barbarian basically doesn't have to move. It is actually possible to run a circle around a barbarian all day long until they de despawn without them really moving. This is actually possible. So having a quicker march is always better. Um, I would even say, or like me personally, in my home kingdom, I'm using Tao Tao. Uh, he, like my equipment is good enough. He has a healing spell. He is fast. This is for me, hands down, in my home kingdom, the absolute best commander for this. So yeah, um, maybe for the beginning, yeah, sure, using like for the first, very first couple hours, use a slow march just to make sure you know how far can I walk. But over time, uh, yeah, make sure you are using a fast march and make sure you are really figuring out how to properly wrap around a barbarian. Because many, many times this becomes a great advantage for you um, at uh, scenarios where other people actually break their chain. But because you know how to do it, you can keep your chain alive. Then I want to touch base on the rewards and we all know what you get. Um, you get crystals, you get resources, you get, uh, no, not crystals, gems, pardon me. You get gems, you get resources, you get speed ups, you get tons of knowledge and equipment material. And yeah, in KVK, you also get crystals. Now, I want to make, make this clear. 
I personally have been Bob Jenning a lot in this KVK. We are about 20 minutes into it, uh, 20 days. And at this point, just alone from Bob Jenning without, you know, like sending out five peacekeepers and stuff, I'm, I think I would have formed at this point something like 450 million resources, 10,000 gems. Um, I would assume or uh, like just really over the thumb uh, calculation, maybe one uh, legendary equipment material for every really long session of Bob chaining. So this stuff really accumulates. Um, they, they don't do one Bob chain, look at it and think, oh, well, actually, it's not so much that I'm getting. No, do it, do it for, for a, a, I don't know, like a couple of hours or do it a, for a couple of days every now and then. And then look at all the reports and put them together and you will see like there is a, there is an abundance abundance of all the resources to be made from from all of this for basically nothing. And you always like I like I said before, you always have to remember other people are actually spending insane amounts of AP. So now you are um, gaining an advantage over those people. I also want to make sure that, well, actually, I always make sure that I'm talking about the following, which is the rewards beyond just the immediate uh, return that you get from the barbarians. Um, just for example, about a week ago, maybe two weeks, um, we had the uh, event, it was some seasonal event where you have to contribute something to Alliance Chests. I got the first spot in this event without ever looking at it, like I didn't care. It was just from what I'm doing anyway, which is Bob Channing, and I completely crushed it by like 1400 contributions. We also had the strategic reserves a couple of days ago. I think I got the third spot and this is without me going for this uh, event. I didn't care. It was just me doing what I always do, which is Bob Chaining. You also get um, KVK achievement rewards and so on and so forth. There was always a an event going on that is playing into your hands if you are um, Bob Chaining. Uh, this even you could uh, take this even further for example I am Bob Chaining and my plan going into this KVK was okay I'm really spending insane amounts of time doing this and by doing that I can actively hunt the bastion quests um, for increasing your power and troop training what happens now is I am not losing resources nor speed ups i'm actually still gaining them but hunting those quests i get a whole lot of car items and now i have a really big amount of car all the time and by doing that i can offset the disadvantage i have in crystals over spenders i mean you have to think about it if you are lucky, you get 10 of those quests a day, okay, if you are really lucky. But that's 450,000 crystals. Now, think about what happens, what, what if this happens 10 to 15 times during one KVK. That's millions upon millions of crystals atop of the immediate return you get from the barbarians, which at this point, I would assume, um, going by the honor that I have in this KVK, I would assume just from killing barbarians in general, I would have gotten maybe 250,000 crystals, maybe something like that. So that's just a top on, of that. So the, the rewards you get uh, from Barb Janik are absolutely insane. And um, I would actually really like to at some point, uh, maybe some way, I, I don't know, it would be difficult, but I really would like 
to track everything I get, like literally everything I get just from Bob chaining during 1kvk and I think you would actually be surprised. So yeah, there it is. Thank you very much for watching. I just want to briefly mention that I'm going to regularly stream on Twitch. That is twitch.tv slash harambi53. The reason I'm going over there and not on YouTube is not because I like Twitch, because I certainly don't, um, but it's there's just no exploration or whatsoever on YouTube. You gotta have a community ready um, if you wanna stream on YouTube. I also don't really wanna, you know, work on the algorithm with stupid video titles like this is absolutely insane, can I do this and stuff like that. You know, it's just not my type. Um, so yeah, on February 8th, this is in three days, we're gonna have a big fight in the KVK. I'm gonna stream it, I'm also gonna cut it up a little and uh, upload it on YouTube as kind of like a highlight video. Is uh, I, I think um, that's how I'm gonna do it for the future. Um, would be very cool to see you over there. And again, thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.